Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're finally getting around to taking a look at the all new Raspberry Pi CM4 otherwise known as the Compute Module 4. So what I have here is the 4 gigabyte model. They offer a ton of different variants of this. I'll leave links in the description in case you're interested in trying to pick one up. But shipping right now on these has been taking absolutely forever. Now the Compute Modules were never really meant to be used as, let's say, a desktop single board computer running a desktop operating system on it. These were mainly designed for embedded systems and clusters. But the main thing that I'm excited about for the CM4 is emulation. So that's what we're going to be testing today. Now, as you can see, the CM4 module itself is super tiny. We are going to have some awesome handhelds in 2021. And I do have some inside information on one that's going to be releasing in early 2021, hopefully early 2021. But the way shipping's going right now, it might be pushed back a little bit. I can't reveal much about it. All I can say is it will be powered by the CM4. It's going to have a big, beautiful IPS display. And the whole handheld's going to be set up in the horizontal position like the PSP or the PS Vita. But that's all I can disclose right now, and I am super excited about this one. I will have a video as soon as I get my hands on one, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. So real quick, I just wanted to do a size comparison between the old CM3 module versus the CM4. As you can see, the CM3 module kind of has that SODIMM form factor. We've actually taken a look at a lot of different handhelds powered by it, and it's a decent little unit. But when it comes to the CM4, basically what we have here is a Raspberry Pi 4. It's using the same CPU, and you can get this all the way from 1 gig of RAM all the way up to 8 gigs of RAM, and they also offer models with onboard eMMC storage. So performance on the CM4 will definitely outpace the CM3 or the CM3+. Plus. And just taking a quick look at the full-size Raspberry Pi versus the CM4, you can see that this thing is super tiny. But you might have noticed, I mean, there's no built-in USB, there's no built-in HDMI or anything like that. So right now, as it sits, you can't just go out and buy a CM4, plug-in power, HDMI, and a micro SD card and be up and running. You will need an I.O. board. And when it comes to handhelds, all of this will be done with a custom PCB inside of the unit itself, so the CM4 module just plugs right into it. But in order to get up and running today with the CM4, I also picked up the Compute Module 4 I.O. board. Now this is an awesome little unit here that allows the CM4 to plug directly into it. We have HDMI, Ethernet, USB, and even PCIe X1. So as you can see, I mean, there's a lot going on with this I.O. board, and this is really the only choice right now as making this video to get it up and running. I have seen some custom boards on Twitter and Reddit, but those aren't released to the public yet. But when it comes to the I.O. board, we have external power. This will run on 12 volts or 5 volts, two full-size HDMI 2.0 connectors, two USB 2.0 connectors, gigabit Ethernet, a micro USB connector for updating the Compute Module 4, a micro SD card slot to run our operating system from, PCIe Gen 2 X1 slot, standard fan connection, two MIPI DSI connectors, two MIPI CSI connectors for cameras, it's got the standard Raspberry Pi 40-pin GPIO, an RTC battery socket, and a ton of different jumpers to disable specific features on the CM4. And adding the CM4 to the I.O. board is super simple. There's two 100-pin high-density connectors on the back of the CM4, and this is going to plug directly into the I.O. board. Now, like I mentioned, the main reason I'm excited about the CM4 is building retro handhelds out of it because we have such a small form factor unit here now with a lot more power than the CM3 or the CM3+. Plus. But if you're interested in taking a deep dive with the CM4, I would recommend checking out Jeff Geerling's YouTube channel. I'll leave a link for that in the description. He does some deep dives with the CM4. He's done a lot of testing with it. And overall, he just has an awesome channel if you're interested in the Raspberry Pi 4. He does a lot of cluster projects, and I'm sure he's got something coming up with a cluster on the CM4 as soon as he can get a hold of some parts. So I would highly recommend heading over there and checking out his videos also. So when it's all said and done, it looks something like this. And when you compare the size to the Raspberry Pi 4, this thing is absolutely massive with the I.O. board. But remember, I mean, this is a development board. This allows you to work with the CM4, and mainly this is for development purposes, to get used to the CM4 and program it specifically for embedded applications to bring it down and make it much smaller. Now since this video is about emulation on the CM4, I'm actually just going to go ahead and install RetroPie, and we're going to test out some of the higher end emulators. But one thing I really like about the CM4 itself is it is overclockable to 2.3 GHz. And to achieve this without overheating or thermal throttling, I'm going to be using this small heatsink here. It's actually a really nice little heatsink. We're running off a of 5 volt from the GPIO. 
and the only thing that I added to the config.txt was a line to make the USB 2.0 ports work on the I.O. board with RetroPie and my overclock settings. Alright, so here we are. Got RetroPie installed. I just used the base image from the website and I added those two lines for the overclock and the USB fix. I really want to see how this thing's going to handle N64, PlayStation, PSP, and Dreamcast because when it comes to a Raspberry Pi 4 handheld, that's exactly what I'm looking for because even the CM3 can handle the older stuff just fine. NES, PC Engine, FBA, Neo Geo, and things like that work great on the older Pies. But when it comes to this newer generation, we really need some decent performance in the higher end stuff to make it really worth it. But before we move up a little higher, I'm going to throw in a single PS1 game because I want to make sure the CM4 is running just as well as the Raspberry Pi 4, the Raspberry Pi 3, or the 3B+. As you can see, I do have the FPS up in the top right hand corner and PS1 is running like a dream on this. I expected it too, but I just wanted to make sure we were kind of getting the same performance out of this that we are on the Pi 4 or the Pi 3. And so far, it's looking great. Moving over to N64, this has kind of been the bane of the Raspberry Pi 3 and even early on in the Raspberry Pi 4, but a lot of work has been put into optimization and there are a lot of great games that run at full speed. As you can see here, we have Diddy Kong Racing and it's running absolutely amazing on the CM4. Next up, we have PSP using the standalone PPSSPP emulator inside of RetroArch. This is Tekken 6, 2x resolution, no frame skip, no hacks, and it's running great. We're at 60 FPS, I do have the frame counter up in the top right hand corner. This is definitely not the hardest game to run for this emulator, but to see it running at 2x resolution on a Raspberry Pi 4, in this case a CM4, is pretty amazing compared to older versions of the Pi where it really, really struggled. And of course, I had to throw Chains of Olympus in here. Unfortunately, even with this 2.3 GHz overclock, I did have to turn frame skip on. So we're at 1x resolution with frame skip. I do have a couple hacks on, but it's running at 30. I mean, this isn't ideal, but in my opinion, it is totally playable like this. Now, when it comes to frame skip, I'm not a big fan of it, but this game really does require it on these lower end systems. Now this is using OpenGL, I haven't enabled any Vulkan drivers, but I suspect that even when we get good Vulkan support for the Pi 4, I still think that this game in particular is still going to struggle and we will require some frame skip, even using the Vulkan back end with PPSSPP. And finally, we have some Dreamcast using ReDream. Now there was one issue that I ran into with RetroPie and ReDream, so I'm actually using Raspberry Pi OS and the standalone version of ReDream right now because I could not change the resolution without the emulator crashing. Not exactly sure what was going on, I probably needed to do some updating inside of the RetroPie setup script, but instead of wasting any more time with it, I figured I'd just swap over to Raspberry Pi OS because as you can see, I mean, this runs amazingly in Raspberry Pi OS. We're at the native Dreamcast resolution, FPS is up in the top left hand corner, and at 2.3 GHz, this is some of the best performance that I've seen out of this emulator on a Raspberry Pi so far. And we got one more to test here, Crazy Taxi 2. Kind of the same thing, I did notice a few hiccups here and there, but overall this is definitely playable at the native resolution with that 2.3 GHz overclock on the CM4. Alright, so yeah, I mean, the CM4 at 2.3 GHz actually does an amazing job with emulation. 
I really do wish they would have kept the SODIMM layout of the original compute modules, but due to power constraints and the fact that they wanted to add PCI to this unit, they had to go ahead and revamp the whole board. But it would have been nice to upgrade the older handhelds that use the CM3 or the CM3 Plus with the Compute Module 4. Unfortunately, that's just not going to work out, so we do have to wait on new handhelds to be released, but once they are, we're going to get some really great performance and awesome form factors. Now, you might be familiar with the Pi Boy DMG. This is one of my favorite handhelds, and it's actually powered by a full-size Raspberry Pi 4, and it's got a cooling fan built in, so you can overclock it. But just taking a look at this, they could slim this down so much and make it a lot thinner just by using this Compute Module 4. Now, personally, I wouldn't want a Compute Module 4 in a vertical layout like the DMG here. I would want something in a horizontal layout more akin to the Switch, the PSP, or the PS Vita, and we will be seeing those in 2021. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Like I mentioned, if you want to learn more about the CM4 and the I.O. board, check out Jeff Geerling's YouTube channel. And if there's anything else at all you want to see running on the CM4 on my end, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.